Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick. We're here at the TM Forum in Nice on the Côte d'Azur in France and I'm talking with Michael Rayner who is a Director of Deloitte Services. Michael, welcome. Well, thank um, you. Here at the show you have launched a collection of five reports, I believe, yep. which look in detail at various aspects of the Internet of Things. Tell us about it. Sure, it's a collection of work that we've assembled over the last six to eight months, a series of research reports that really bring together work that has, uh, I suppose you'd say it's the culmination of a number of years of, of, of work, client work, reflection, trying to understand what we think uh, the Internet of Things uh, means for topics like strategy, security, uh, analytics, uh, value chain, uh, and, uh, and customer relationships. So those are the first five, uh, first five reports in the series. We've compiled them and, and brought them here to TM Forum and launched them as a special collection. Uh, and it's really the, the debut of a series of research reports. Uh, the uh, the follow-up reports that will be coming up over the coming months uh, will include an investigation of the impact of IoT technologies on a, a number of industry verticals. So among them, uh, healthcare, uh, including medical devices and healthcare providers, financial services, uh, the impact on telecom, uh, communication service providers, financial services, and so on. Okay. Now, I've spent a lot of time interviewing people and talking to people about the Internet of Things mm -hmm. and vertical markets, as you can, as you can understand and of imagine. Um, but let's talk about what I'm particularly interested in in this case, uh, Michael, is what you've been talking about in, in terms of how IoT affect strategy. What do you mean by that? What kind of strategy? A carrier strategy? Well, so even even more uh, generic than that. So really looking at, at the core questions of what, it, what any organization strategy is intended to, to address, namely mm -hmm. two questions. Mm. How do you create value uh, and how do you capture value? And so at that level, uh, we believe that even at that level of, of abstraction, there's something important to say about uh, the unique features in the Internet of Things. Um, the basic technologies that uh, kind of come together to create the IoT have been around uh, in some one recognizable form or another really for decades. Um, but we think it's all kind of coming together. The various streams have all flown together to create a raging river, if you will, um, that uh, a whole suite of technologies have reached a level of performance simultaneously that now we think in some respects the game is about to change while at the same time, in other very material respects, uh, things remain pretty much the same. And so that's what we're exploring. So what, okay, another question then. What's going to remain the same and what's going to change? Yes, well, I set you up for that one, didn't you I? You did, nicely uh, done. Thank you. Um, <laughs> glad you asked. So um, when it comes to what, what changes, we think that really the IoT technologies change how organizations create value. Uh, time was an organization competed effectively on its supply chain, which is a, a ver essentially a, a linear series of steps that transform inputs into outputs, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Um, but the IoT technologies make it possible for organizations now to compete on the basis of the information generated by those products or services. And information, we think, creates value in a fundamentally different way. We've introduced this notion of the information value loop as a way to understand that. And it doesn't replace the supply chain, but it's a critically important complement. Uh, now, when it comes to what stays the same, that's value capture. And value capture, we think, remains understood by the twin concepts of competitive position, if you will, where to play, uh, and competitive advantage, uh, which we think of in terms of how to win. And so value creation, utterly transformed. Value capture, utterly the same. So who's the audience for this, Michael? Well, our view is that it's, it's of uh, certainly potential relevance to uh, managers and leaders in any organization that is, uh, that is looking to take advantage of these technologies. So uh, the industry verticals that I mentioned a moment ago are all taking this value loop construct, coupling it with notions of, of position and advantage, and exploring how those come together in a variety of different circumstances. Um, uh, I've been involved in the creation of a paper that looks at how it impacts, for example, uh, communication service providers. Um, I have other colleagues that are driving it down uh, uh, retail paths, looking at wearables in banking, et cetera, and so forth. So it really is uh, a bit of a voyage of exploration uh, as, we, as we sort this out, very often in collaboration with our clients. So what are your conclusions as far as CSPs are concerned? Look, let's look at the telecommunications side of things for a moment, if we could. Um, what, what, 
do you find, what do you think is happening? Because there are so many debates about whether or not traditional CSPs who have been under the hammer from the OTT players for a long time are agile and able enough to understand the changes that are coming and to be able to take advantage of it quickly enough before they get left behind. Sure. Well, there are, as you might expect, any number of dimensions that we could look at. Mm. Um, for now, where we've looked at it is in terms of uh, what we see to be a new opportunity for organizations and CSPs uh, to collaborate probably much more closely than they have in the past. Uh, the, the whole dumb pipes conversation that we had back in the late 90s, early 2000s with the rise of the internet uh, turned out in some sense to be a bit of a red herring, right? I mean, being a dumb pipe, providing uh, you know, reliable bandwidth in quantity turned out to be a pretty good business after yeah. all, so it wasn't such a bad deal. Uh, a big part of that, I think, is explained by the fact that the early internet, which separated services from the communications networks that they were riding over, were really connecting pretty smart things, namely people. And when you're connecting smart things, well, a dumb pipe is pretty much all you need. But when you start connecting dumb things, even if you try and make them smart with sensors, they're still not nearly as clever as people, not yet anyway, um, then you need a smarter pipe, arguably, in order to make those connections work well. Um, the, uh, the piece that uh, I've worked on in collaboration, really has, it's been led by my colleague Phil Wilson, uh, and so he and I have put something together that will be out in the next couple of months that explores that in greater detail. Okay. What about security then? Security, of course, critically important. That's something that has always been an issue in our increasingly digital lives. This is one of those things that uh, is as important as it ever as it ever was, and more so. Um, security, when but, uh, in the keynote here at the TM Forum, I, I, I quipped that if somebody hacks your credit cards, that can cost you your credit rating. If somebody hacks your self-driving car, that can cost you your life. So security is a very big deal. Uh, and privacy too is kind of a twin construct, right? Mm. Uh, on the internet, they used mm. to say no one knows you're a dog, um, but but now because you're on the internet, everyone knows you're a dog, and this raises a whole manner of uh, of issues. Uh, so my uh, my colleagues at Irfan Saif and Sean Peasley have uh, have uh, really dug into that that question. Okay, in terms of the imminency of the Internet of Things. We know there are smart meters out there, and <laughs> Nest, and all the other things you can, you can think about, but how big do you foresee, in real terms, this market being worth, not necessarily, well, let's talk, we could talk globally, we could talk North America, we could <laughs> talk Europe, or whatever. How near is it to becoming a reality, and what do you think is its base worth? <laughs> well, uh you know the expression the future is already here is just unevenly distributed mm, yeah? yes. so it's almost <laughs> almost certainly true in this case as well I'm not really in the prediction game we've concluded that it's going to be big enough to matter right? Right. so and that's that that's kind of all we need to to get started trying to understand where it takes us coping with the uncertainties surrounding some of those questions that is in fact uh, one of the tools we have in our toolkit uh, for helping organizations deal with strategic questions under uncertainty um, so I sort of, uh, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to dodge that one. That's all right, that's fair enough. It's nice to hear somebody actually dodge it and admit <laughs> they're dodging it rather than saying it's going to be worth 42 trillion this time <laughs> next Saturday. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to hear it. A final question to you then. So what happens now? You've got these five reports out that cover the areas you've been discussing. You're looking at the vertical market. Yep. What's next? Well, that's what's next, frankly. I mean, this is, uh, th this is a program of work that has uh, occupied us pretty much full time um, for, for close to a year and, and will continue to do so for at least the next year. So we're in the business now of, uh, of completing the existing reports, exposing them to the marketplace, and now beginning to get some feedback. We're not, uh, we don't think that what we've published here is the last word on the IoT by any means. Uh, if we've done our job well, it's the first word. Is it an iterative process then? You get feedback, you have the loop, and you, you continue? Well, um, we, we learn from everyone, uh, so absolutely. <laughs> uh, the hope is that, that this, will, uh, this will provoke a conversation and it will give us an opportunity uh, both to, uh, to contribute to our client's success and to, and to learn from their success. It's been fascinating talking to you. It's a fascinating subject. Michael Rayner, thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure.